is coming together, guys. And today, I want to touch on, this is usually my session of your questions answered. I didn't really get a lot of questions answered. I got a lot of people that said, hey, I got this phone and I love it. Hey, I got this phone too. Hey, I'm getting that case. Converting your questions answered to tips and tricks. Little things that I found, because I'm relatively new to Pixel. Y'all know this channel focuses mainly on imports. With this Pixel, it was a foldable, right up my alley. What I want to give you are little things that I found while playing around with this phone for the past week plus. This is like, hey, my phone is text messaging for me. This is the session you want to watch. So let's get right into it. Let's start off with things that are kind of native to Pixel phones and Pixel says, hey, why don't you try this out? Which would be hold for me, call screening, and flip the shh. That's not the bad word, that shh as in be quiet. Flip the shh is just what it says it is. You flip it over, it puts your phone into do not disturb mode. It's kind of similar to like when, I think like on most other Androids, if you get a call you dislike, you flip the phone over and it silences that call. Now, I prefer that method rather than putting my phone in do not disturb mode because I might forget that I left it face down in do not disturb mode and I might get other calls. Hold for me will come in handy for a lot of people, especially if you call customer service or various places that like to put you on hold. What it does is the phone alerts you to when there's an actual human being on the other line or something that requires you to give a response rather than you just sitting on the phone holding like, oh my God, what are these people gonna pick up? Very helpful, I've used that. And I have used call screening. Now, call screening is one of my favorite features. Anytime I leave a Pixel device, I miss call screening. Then you make sure you go through there and you turn it on. And they've even broken it down to where you can send a lot of these calls that they anticipate are spam when they come in. You send them straight to call screening. So my phone really rings now, unless it's my people. So that's something you really need to get into and you want to go into settings you want to go into the hamburger menu on the side and you want to drop down and you'll see call screen you want to tap that and then yeah i leave it open for first time callers because i do have some first time callers and i don't want them to be screened if i know they're coming if i don't know they're coming they're gonna get the same treatment as everybody else but speaking of call screening and me using it recently I did notice that I can change the voice of the person who is talking to these people. It's always a woman before, now I have a man that does it. So my call screener is a man, but you can change it. You can pick various voices, pick what you want. Another question I get asked sometimes on streams and sometimes just by people is about my video wallpaper. Not that they personally want mine, but they take interest in the fact that it is a video wallpaper and it's not something that they've pretty much seen. So. I will let you know that this is actually an application called Video Wallpaper. It's literally called Video Live Wallpaper. And I will put up the little image in the App Store. And when you go into it, literally you can take any video that you have on file and make it your video for your phone. It's worked on all the pixels I've had. Now when it plays, it plays with sound typically. I have the sound fairly low on mine, but see it's playing with the sound. So if I tap that, it's gonna give me an ad first. Once you tap that, it'll say set the wallpaper. You tap that and say you set it for home screen, live screen, or both. You select that and it makes it your wallpaper. Mine is already set. One of the other things that kind of improved a little bit was the now playing. And now playing now has a setting to where you can access songs that you could not locate previously. Go into settings, you go into now playing, and it's selected to identify near songs, but there's also a button in the middle that was turned off that says show search button on lock screen. And this identifies songs playing nearby that aren't recognized by your device. How now playing search works if a song has not been identified on the device recognition, you can tap the search icon and search for a song. When you search, Google receives relevant audio info needed to identify what's playing nearby. My phone just went off in the middle of that. I will tell you that's one of my rules that's set up. Whenever I'm connected to my home internet, my device is set to sound. Whenever I'm connected to my work internet, my device is set to silent. So since that came up and it wasn't even on my list of things to cover because rules have kind of been around, I'll show you how that works. So if you go into settings and search for rule, it'll come up with rules and you can set up your own rules. Well, I have the Gadget Goddess network here and I set that to ring. I have my work network set up under it 
and I've set that to silent. I don't have to remember to turn my so sound on and off when I go to work. Cause you know, I'm all about some sounds if I'm not interrupting other people and their flow and I'm not sitting with a client. But if I'm sitting with work client, I don't want my phone yelling out gadget goddess and stuff, you know? Something else that might be helpful for people while they're at work. I allow apps to snooze. Let me show you how that works. If you go into notifications, once you're in notifications, you want to go to down here to the bottom. <laughs> then you want to go down here to allow notification snoozing. You see this Z up here near Bleacher Report? I can tap that and it snoozes for an hour, but I can drop it down and say, hey, I only want it to snooze for the next 15 minutes. So after it snoozes for 15 minutes and I am done with this video, Bleacher Report can blow me up like it's been doing the whole time. If you're in a group text and people are getting really active, it happens to me a lot, I will snooze it. So I find this really helpful for people who have really active phones, content creators, business people, just people who can get various alerts from various sources that sometimes you need to focus on one thing and people just aren't allowing you to do so. Secure people, people who don't like the business out there, people don't like their phones lighting up showing all their messages. This is for you. I am a watch wearing person and I don't like my screen lighting up saying, hey, you got a text message. My watch tells me that. To fix that feature, you would go into security and privacy, more privacy, and you're gonna go into notifications on lock screen. And I have mine to not show at all. Some people will want them to show, but just not the sensitive information. Listen, I'll default back to when I told you I don't get great battery life on this phone. I'm still not getting great battery life on this phone. And I know others are, but this is one less thing to wake my phone up and drain my battery. So my phone does not light up when I get notifications, which is a blessing to me. And it might be a blessing to some of y'all. If I have any iPhone people, this might be something that you are familiar with. I always called it back tap when I had an iPhone. You can set up back tap feature on your Pixel. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into system, cause that's what it told me. And then you're gonna go into gesture. And under all these features, you know, you have the quick to open cam and everything else. You're gonna go to quick tap to start actions. What I use my quick tap for is to take a screenshot. You can use it for the digital assistant. You can play or pause media, see recent apps, show notification, toggle your flashlight, or you can just pick whatever app you want. So you're not limited just to those at the top. I do screenshot because I take lots of screenshots. Make sure you turn on that require stronger taps button at the bottom. Otherwise you're going to be taking a lot of screenshots. It's not even doing it here. So it was pretty rough. Okay. Quick tap detected. So it did say that it detected my tap. I guess because I'm in this feature right now, it's not taking a picture. It took the picture. Another thing that's pretty helpful about um, pictures, if you want to save pictures, I am going out on the edge and getting on my Instagram right quick. That's a video. So let's see if we can find a picture. All right, found me a picture. Thank you, Carolina Panthers. So if you're ever on a site or whatever that has pictures swipe up like you're trying to put it in the background and you'll see this little picture icon pop up you tap that and it steals just the picture so i want to save that and now it's saved now if i want to see the picture that i just saved i just go into files and there's that picture that i just saved from the panthers well, that's another tip for you so you don't end up screenshotting everything like I do in my regular life to keep receipts. Another thing that's helped me a lot since I've been struggling with this battery is active apps. According to this phone, I don't have any active apps right now. And you can see what is active on the phone during that time. So let me see if I can make this have an active app. So I'll open up YouTube. And down here at the very bottom, it'll say one app is active. And I can tap on that and it tells me YouTube has been active for one minute. If I want to stop that app, I just hit here and it will stop the app for me. So YouTube is no longer playing. This has come in handy since I've been battling my requests to see how I can achieve better battery life on this phone. I'm not going to dwell in that, but that's this one thing I'm using in my battle with it. Now this one's fairly new to me. Just started using it today because I just found it today. Fun, fun, fun. That's why I had to make this video for y'all. Okay, Google, activate voice access. So now voice access is on, right? It's keying every word that I'm saying. It can't understand it, that's fine. Open threads. It's opened my threads app and 
it's listening to every word so it's gonna tell me it can't do anything that I'm saying now scroll down scroll up go home so we're back home so I'm gonna tap this deposit one of the joys in this is after I've used it and just played with it for a little while I have the setting for this turned on to after 30 minutes if nothing is heard then it'll shut itself off that way I don't have it just running and draining my battery but it's something cool to kind of play with. I don't have it all the way figured out, but I would think for issues or like when you're in the car and things like that, it can very much send text messages for you. Let's say you want to scroll through as and you're eating chicken. You don't want to get chicken grease all over your phone. It does that. Let me tell you how to get into this because it gives you a tutorial, which I'm not going to walk you through a tutorial because I'm fairly new to it. Go into settings. You want to go into accessibility. Once you go into accessibility, you want to go into voice access. Once you go into voice access, you want to turn on voice access. Uh, you can make a shortcut where it has a little blue dot on the corner of your screen. I'd rather not. I just keep it at the top for myself. But there's things like go back, go home, show notifications, click OK, open photos. So all those are options. And you can say, what can I say? And there's your little options for different things that you can say. Couple things you want to do just for like improvement sake. Facial audio. I would say make sure you turn it on for your speakers. Yeah, sound and vibrations maybe. Spatial audio, I have it on for my phone speaker and my wired headphones. So I would advise you to cut those both on in case you're saying, hey, I wish my speakers were a little bit better. And while we're on audio settings, if you not put sound amplifier on your phone, it's more helpful for people who have hearing issues. I don't have my headphones with me right now, so I can't really show, how, show you how this looks. It also, say you leave a Bluetooth in a room or you leave your phone in a room, you can listen to what's going on in that room. I'm not telling you to spy on people, but you can. <laughs> it's just, it's an option and you know, be leery of phones that you see laying around or just Bluetooth earbuds laying around because people could be listening to you. Just know, all right? The sound amplifier can make you a spy. And these last two are just gonna be for my very private or secretive people, or just people who like to keep things neat in their phones. Cause you know, phones can suck up your data relatively fast. Especially those who might've wanted the 512 and you got the 256. If you did get a smaller storage and you are concerned about running out of storage, let's go into files. And what you can do is you're gonna go into settings and there's a place that says, smart storage and you can permanently delete media backed up google photos that you've had on your device longer than 30 days now this is for my people who have the cloud i do have google one and have the cloud so it's already there so you really don't need to have it in two places at one time you'll just turn this on and then smart storage is on it will remove the things that are in your phone that have been there longer than 60 days. Now remember, if you save them to a certain quality, like they're not in the original quality, they won't save in the super high def quality that you saved them in unless you have them saving that way to your Google One Cloud. Some of y'all have cashed in on the free three months or whatever, and you know, I got that email, but I'm already paying for the cloud. I didn't upgrade to, is it one terabyte, two terabytes? If you've done that, just realize after that's over with, whatever storage you have there that's over the amount that's free, you won't have anymore. That uh, promo, I think it's a six, it's either three or six month promo. And it's a really good deal if you've never tried out the cloud and you get three months of YouTube premium. I didn't get it because I already pay for YouTube premium and I pay for my cloud storage by the year. Just something that's there for you. Last but not least, for my super sneaky people, there is a safe folder, right? You create a pin or a pattern, and I'm doing this just for the sake of video because I'm not gonna create one. So you can put any photos or what or sensitive documents into this safe folder. They won't be saved out here for the regular average person that grabs your phone and starts using it to start using it and say, hey, I see the pictures of your little girls in here. Or, you know, I see a picture of your girl in here. You might not want that. You might want that in your safe folder. And once you save it there, 
you'll have to have the pen to get back in. You see, it asked me for the pen straight away. Last but not least, I did not do a video on this, but if you're into MagSafe, there is a MagSafe case. That's, you know, the kind of carbon fiber plasticky kind of cheaper version than the ones that I did in the previous video. I will drop a link in the description if you're interested in this. I know a lot of people like MagSafe. I'm not crazy about it, but I think this cost me about 13 bucks. So yay, I'm trying to share with the class. If you're interested, hop on that. I did not like the front. I did have somebody comment on one of my videos saying that they can't use front screens with any screen protectors. I beg to differ. This generic kind of carbon fiber and the little later case fit fine with my screen protectors, but the front purple one of these, it started pulling up my screen protector so I can relate in that fashion. And like I've told multiple people, I do mix and match cases. So I just put this black on the front, let the purple ride on the back and no problems. I just wanted to drop that in there right quick along with letting you know that I will do comparison with the original OG Opal Find, the Opal Find N2 and the Google Pixel Fold in an upcoming video. I won't say it's my next video. I have a couple things I need to cover and I do have another case coming in. So I will be shooting those in whatever order my heart desires. But I will tell you those videos are coming because those phones aren't going anywhere. I love my Oppos. I like to thank you for stopping by the channel, checking out my tips and tricks your questions in whatever you want to call this segment of the Google Pixel Fold. If you've enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like button. If you've enjoyed it, multiple videos on this channel, please consider subscribing. Subscriptions are free. Memberships cost and memberships have privileges. If you'd like to know what those privileges are, click on the join button. You'll see which tier might be the tier for you or what each tier has to offer. I'd like to thank you for your time because time is money and I hope to catch you on my next video.